These references that I'll show you are key for all of you distro hoppers out there who are practicing using various different package managers and their switches or arguments, which can help you do things such as update repos, install, remove packages, and even search for packages. So here I have Ubuntu, which uses apt, short for advanced packaging tool. And common things you would do here is install a package with install space, some package name. For example, let's just install Neo fetch and I press enter, type in my password and there you go. That's how I install a package here. And now I can run Neo fetch. Well, if I wanted to remove a package, it'd be sudo apt remove that same package name. And that removes it completely from the disc. Once it's removed, I can't run it anymore. There's also, of course, ways to update, remove, update and remove packages and many, many more options. So you kind of have to remember this across various different Linux distributions because there are different package managers. I was just using apt, but let's talk about a few others such as Pacman for Arch based Linux distributions. Now using Pacman is completely different than using apt, the one that we were using a moment ago and is also different from using DNF, Emerge, or even Nix. Pacman is typically on Arch Linux based distributions, apt here on Debian or Ubuntu based distros. DNF, you're gonna find that on RHEL based distributions, Emerge on Gentoo, and finally Nix on Nix based distros. So there are definitely more. These are just to name a few. How do we keep track of all of these? Because we know as you go across these, such as Pacman to apt or apt to Pacman or to DNF, you're gonna have different switches or commands. So when I say switches or commands, I'm really referencing once we call our package manager, you perhaps have install, remove, search, so on, so forth. Well, with Pacman, that's gonna be different. How do we keep track of these and how do we understand these? Of course, I don't wanna go through all of these in this video. So I'm going to give you an absolutely great reference to keep bookmarked on your personal Linux distribution so you can learn and have in case you ever do want to switch or test another distro, let's say in a virtual machine or something like that. What I will do here is hopefully make a few shorts to show the differences between the package managers and keep it less than 60 seconds. That way we use the basics and keep it concise. Let me know if you want that in the comments section below and let's check out our first resource. All right, the first resource that I wanna show you hidden deep in the package manager wiki is a beautiful table that shows us varying different package managers and some of the most basic actions that you can perform with those and how you would actually execute the varying actions. So to install a package, for example, if you're using Pacman on Arch-based Linux distributions versus apt, well, I already showed you how to install a package earlier with apt. So you do apt install and then the package name versus on Pacman, you'd use Pacman space dash capital S right here, the switch, and then the package name. Fairly simple to remove. You just change that dash S to a dash R. If you wanna remove the package and anything that may be left behind by the package, you use this R, dash R S. To update repos in the software database, you would do dash S Y, and so on and so forth. Other things like updatable packages to show deleting orphans and configurations showing orphans and updating all. Very good. So what's nice about this is we also have access to many other package managers across the board. So let me label a few of these that belong to certain distribution types. So zipper is going to belong to anything with open SUSE based operating systems, Pacman, Arch, Linux, apt. It's going to be Debian or Ubuntu. Let's keep going. Let's keep going across because this has quite the list here. DNF is gonna be RHEL based. Let's see, I don't necessarily know this one, haven't used this one, so that's new to me. Perhaps something I would wanna learn. And then Portage, it's gonna be Gentoo. Nix is for Nix OS. Homebrew is something you can really install on Linux, Mac, or Windows. Check it out if you haven't already. It makes it a lot easier to install things on those operating systems. And finally, WinGet is really meant for Windows. Well, now we know about this beautiful table that will help us go between our various different Linux distributions and use the respective package managers. 
I'll put a link to this table in the comments section below since it's hidden deep within some wikis, but it turns out that package managers can be even more powerful. So let's level up our understanding by using a different reference that I'll show you in a moment. But first, smash that like button for me. This comes straight out of the all-powerful Arch Linux wiki. And I personally like this one even more because it takes a deep dive into the package managers with their various commands, actions, and switches. So very similar to what you saw, but up top, it tells you exactly what they belong to. So as you can tell, you have Pac-Man for Arch, DNF for Red Hat, apt for Ubuntu and Debian-based distros, Zipper for OpenSUSE, and Gen2 using Merge or Portage. So now I'm not gonna really focus on the actual switches themselves, but instead let's focus on the actions and see just how many things there are. So first is searching for packages, install packages, get source packages, only print targets instead of performing the actual operation, toggle manual confirmations, refresh the local package repository, upgrade packages, upgrade, upgrade packages in another form, which include changes in dependencies, remove a package, remove packages and their configuration files, remove packages and all dependencies and configuration files. This is important because sometimes there's remnants of various different packages or software that you've installed on your system. Even though you think you removed it, you might have not removed the dependencies that were included with that package and its configuration. Notice that not everything actually has that capability because it technically can be handled by the base remove package command. Moving on, there's even more. Remove dependencies that are no longer needed. Remove packages no longer included. Mark a package previously installed as dependency as explicitly required. Install packages as dependencies without marking as explicitly required. Only download the given packages without unpacking or installing the system. Clean up all local caches. Start a shell to enter multiple commands. Show a log of actions taken by the software management. Get a dump of the whole system information. Email delivery of package changes and so on and so forth. There's actually even more information which I'm not going to get into specifically about querying packages and trying to get more information about them. Also managing sources and where you get your packages from, overriding, verification, repairing packages, package files and building packages. So the list goes on. I told you this can be a very powerful tool if you ever want to get more involved in your package managers, understanding the inner workings and the full set of commands. This is a, an absolutely great resource. I'll also post this one in the description below. Check it out. Let me know what you think about it and be on the lookout for those shorts where I'll show you some of the basic operations on varying Linux distributions with different package managers. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in another video.